everybody in Grip World. This is Jed Johnson from DieselCrew.com. They call me Napalm. And I hope everyone listening here in the United States had a great Labor Day this past week. Today I'm joined once again by my esteemed co-host, Alan Hynek. And this is episode 65 of This Week in Grip. Alan, how's everything going, dude? How's that shoulder? How's your training going, dude? Oh, training's going good. Uh, shoulder's doing just fine. I'm I'm officially been released from uh, uh, the doctor's care now. They cut me loose just Friday. So mm-hmm. uh, I just got to kind of take it easy for the next, you know, month or two and, and sort of build back up to, to the things that I was doing. Mm-hmm. But other than that, things are going good. Did uh, did block weights and Napalm's Nightmare Day, actually. Oh, uh, boy. How'd that yeah, go, man? You, it went good. It went good. You and I were actually messaging at the uh, at the tail end of that session. So. Oh really? Um, yeah, I uh, I didn't I didn't you know I was hoping to get some more action on the on the blob fifty that's been kind of hit and miss here lately, but mm-hmm. uh, at least uh, at least the hexes are back on track. So uh, I, I I've thrown the napalm nightmare in. That's kind of a like my a, a secondary sort of thick bar day for me, because um, you know using that I do that double overhand and that's a really weak position for me with 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 any sort of lift I have to more or less do things in the in the neutral position. Mm. So okay. I, I'm, I'm hoping that lifting it that way will actually help me strengthen it out, you know, or, or strengthen that weaker spot for me, and it might carry over to, to the crusher come King Kong time. But uh, we'll see. Just a theory. No reason to, you know, might as well play with it and see what happens. So Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, <clears throat> Let me ask you something, dude. Yeah. You talked about grip orientation on the Napalm's Nightmare. Have you tried lifting it with an alternated grip? <laughs> no, but I was considering that. I was I was considering um, doing it more or less where I would straddle it and have it um, thinking as front of me. If, if um, how the hell do I describe this? If you were gonna if you were gonna stand uh, straddling an axle, for example, so you would have a, an over underhand grip. I thought about taking poles on it that way, actually. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, just for uh, no other reason than than working my hands in the stronger way, but getting more work done faster because I could work them both at the same time. Mm-hmm. And um, but that no sooner popped in my head that left it. I didn't. I didn't take it anywhere after that. Actually, so <laughs> you've seen people use like a like a mixed grip though, as in lifting it conventionally, but using a mixed grip. No, you know, you know, the reason I brought this up. You said the grip orientation, or whatever. And last week I did try it, but for months Luke and I have not debated, but it's come up a few times whether or not it would be any easier to lift it with an alternated grip versus double overhand. And I was thinking, man, <clears throat> it just seems like it'll be a little easier. Like, like if your best pull is 250, you might be able to get 260. You know, just just a that's a pretty small percentage. It's not a it's not a big increase, but I figured that's what you what someone might be capable of. But I never tried it. <clears throat> as far as I can remember, I never tried it. And uh, this the, the past weekend there when we were up to Syracuse for that contest, I was in I was still in warm up mode and I did give it a little pull on the crane scale to see if there was any difference and there were really it might have been 2 pounds like and for that that's that could be you know, it doesn't even have to be the grip that could be like something else maybe you were standing in a little bit different spot you know a little yeah. bit different angle somewhere you know that's not a very big difference at all so it was pretty darn close I didn't try it again after that like you said nope. after that I forgot all about it and never even crossed in my mind again yeah, uh, lifting things in that way, that just, even even for the lighter weights we would theoretically encounter on, like, the Napalm's Nightmare and things like that, that just, something about that bothers me, just the thought of that and the position of the bicep, you know? Because I, oh, yeah, I tend absolutely. to, absolutely. I tend to always have a little bit of flex whenever I'm doing, whenever I'm doing grip lifts, mm-hmm. and, yeah, that's just not conducive for, for my style anyway. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Well, if anybody else but, tries that, I'd like to hear about it because yeah, uh, you know, there's bound to be some. I, I would say, I mean, guys like you know, get those guys like you, you know, Luke, for example. I mean, shit, he's, he's strong as hell in his arms and everything already. I mean, he's probably a good candidate for that and wouldn't wouldn't really have much much injury risk. I wouldn't think. You know, right? He could probably give a give a real good answer on that. Yeah, I right. hear you. I hear you. Um, speaking of Syracuse, I have submitted. <coughs> the next competition for consideration for sanctioning with Grip Sport International as a NAGS qualifier. So I didn't do that. I didn't do that for the one here the day before Labor Day. 
but uh, I have done it for the October 6th competition, which is taking place at the Man Show, which is still up to Syracuse at the State Fair, State Fairgrounds. And uh, uh, let's see, two years ago when I was there, it was in like the horticulture building, but it could be moved somewhere else. But uh, that has been submitted. It's being discussed by the Grip Sport International Board, and I'll be able to get back to people on that uh, fairly soon. Um, real quick, Alan, I thought what I'd do is I'd go back and look at comments because we did, we did ask for people's thoughts on the, the straps. With, uh, yeah, the straps I saw um, it. Uh, Big Brian Hunsacker remarked in a way that I wasn't I wasn't surprised to see how he commented on that. Yeah, I'm uh, going to go ahead and read that it. right now, actually. So yeah. this is from The Biggest Hun. It's Brian Hunsacker on YouTube. It's in the comments section under episode 64 of This Week in Grip, which was titled Straps and Hooks on the Denny's. I love the topic and the episode. I agree wholeheartedly that hook grip and straps should be considered separately and that in no circumstance should a hold for time be allowed with a hook grip. Alan and Jed, thanks for the mention. A little aside, nobody has actually walked the stones. Some people have slid them across the bridge with a pick-and-slide drop model, but nobody has walked, walked them without straps. It is actually widely debated if Denny himself, there's a surprise, actually walked them, as there is not a real account of it but a random mention in writing. It is my humble opinion that if they are walked the width of the bridge without a hook grip, that will be one of the all-time feats of strength and obviously grip strength. Thanks, guys. So oh, the reason I say, oh, there's a big surprise is because, um, you know, you, you, you hear about these things that are like so many decades and hundreds of years old, and yet there always seems to be question about the validity of the feet. Validity. So you have well, this with... Uh, it's like the, the inch Denny's. dumbbell and everything. Yep, the Denny's with um, Thomas Inch dumbbell you know thomas inch himself joe kinney with his number four clothes i mean it's like there's always this uh this mystical lore and you know history being revised and stuff like that so but that was uh that was brian hunsacker's take on the denny stones what was your reaction you know to that I thought, yeah, I thought he was, I thought he was spot on. You know that that remark, I didn't, I didn't realize um, that nobody had actually walked the stones um, in the conventional sense. They do make a, they do make a reference in the rules as to that. You know, he referred to it as what the pick and slide method, and they they do make a specific reference to that in the rules, I believe. Um, but I didn't realize nobody had actually picking them up and and taking them for the, for the hike. So that right. was that was neat to hear. Um, you know, in mentioning, just in getting back to, you know, if, if Denny himself actually lifted those, and we talked about, uh, you, you mentioned um, Thomas Inch and the uh, number four clothes. You know, if it wasn't for some of those things, we wouldn't have a lot of these things we have now. You know, so you kind of have to give a little credit to it, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, the, the Inch dumbbell, that wouldn't even be here if somebody hadn't come along and, you know, <laughs> came up with that hoax once upon a time, you know. Right, so, right, and now, right. of course, we actually have people doing this stuff, so. Sure. I uh, wouldn't entirely wouldn't entirely fault them. It would be nice if some people might own up to some of the feats in the end, but uh, mm. nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, no so. doubt. <clears throat> um, and speaking of that, uh, so last week's show, the first part of the show was about, uh, or the second part of the show was about the, uh, the, the use of straps and stuff on the Denny Stones. And it just so turns out that here recently, my friend Eric Ferrillo, um, in the Mind and Muscle podcast, interviewed a gentleman by the name of Stevie Shanks, and he talked about that whole entire competition that, that was organized for the Denny Stones. So if anyone nice. wants to hear more about that, I mean, you ain't, you're not going to have a better resource than someone that was right there watching it. And I guess Stevie Shanks may have may have taken an attempt on it, I'm not sure, but I believe he was involved in organizing it, so... Sounds like he's a knowledgeable resource. I was given that reference by Jason Gillen. So, <clears throat> again, if anybody's interested, check out the Mind and Muscle podcast with Eric Ferrillo from Ferrillo Barbell. And it could be something that you'd be interested in hearing and following. Eric does a great podcast. So, another resource for, for everyone for everyone out there. 
Uh, anything else to close the talk on the Denny Stones from last week, Alan? No, I don't think so. Oh, I think we covered that pretty good. Cool. So, like, uh, that is, and I don't think we reminded anybody last week to like the video, so I'm going to do that right now. The reason I say that is because <clears throat> we're at 169 views and only, uh, no, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong number. I was gonna, I was gonna chastise everybody, and I'm, <laughs> I'm wrong for doing so because we have 169 views and 20 likes. So we like, we shoot for uh, 10% of the views in the number of likes, and we, we're at that number. I was looking at the comments; there were 10 comments, so I apologize. Um, we're just about there on episode 63 with Tommy Jennings. And I just want to let everybody know about the views on the Brian Shaw episode, episode 61. I think that's, like, our biggest show ever as far as, like, the first month of it being up because it's got 553 views. Yeah. So, and, and for a long time, that was maintaining the, the 10% percentage proportion of likes to views. We've slid down there now. It's only got 41 for the 553 views. But... Um, you know, that might be our most liked show also. So I appreciate everybody doing that. And please, if uh, if you enjoy hearing about grip and hearing people talk about it, then like the show, and and uh, it helps the show. It helps my channel. I definitely appreciate it. Don't get me wrong. But it gets grip out in front of people based on the YouTube algorithm. And just like our hashtag, This Week in Grip, it's all about getting it in front of more people's eyes because the first rule of grip sport is what, Alan? Tell everybody about grip sport. You tell everybody about grip sport. All right, dude. And that, what is our hashtag at, Alan? You got that in front of you? Uh, 1925, as I saw it, and that was about a half an hour ago. So unless somebody has chimed in since, let me just try to bring that up here. Looks like 19, 1925, yeah. So yep. what we're asking everybody is if you do something cool and upload it to Facebook, then use the hashtag This Week in Grip. And the idea there is Alan and I can access it more easily. Plus, it's we're able to show people that uh, you know there's there's a lot of people out there doing grip. I mean, we even noticed today that there was there's somebody tagged here that's like a fitness competitor in some sweet teal board shorts, right, Alan? Yeah, I, I wasn't gonna go with sweet or anything, but yeah, yeah, definitely <laughs> a, a physique type competitor on there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the story is, but they use the the hashtag, and hey, that's a, that's another that's another occurrence of the hashtag. That's all I can say. I see that uh, Big Joe Sullivan is up in Ottawa for the Cross Canada Grip Grip Championships today. So good luck to Joe. Look forward to hearing about how that goes. And uh, like I said, uh, Joe helped us out last weekend at, at Syracuse. This weekend he was hanging out with. Uh, Devin Lorette comparing forearms. Looks like Joe's right there with, with Devin. Did you see that picture, Alan? I did, yeah. Yep, yep. Hey, do you follow uh, uh, Devin Lorette on, on social? I don't know what he's on on social media, but on YouTube at least. I'm subscribed to him, but because the the YouTube subscription thing is like a, a, an absolute mess, I don't see anything from him. I think probably the problem is I, I subscribed to him way back before you were able to uh, ask for notifications on your subscriptions. So I don't get notified when he puts up a video. But what has he been putting oh, up, Alan? Has he been pretty, well, no, just, pretty cool stuff? Well, no, just um, this was actually a, a bit of a, con, uh, a concession video. So you know he just lost his, his championship. To uh to Michael Todd, what was it? Just this past week, I think. Um, I did not the know the World that, Arm Wrestling no. League Championship. Yep, yep. So, um, this was his concession video, and it was it was actually really nice. You know, I was never sure what to think of uh of of Devin Lerritt in the past. You know, just some of the antics and stuff. I don't know. Kind of just made me. I I would more or less indifferent to the guy, I guess. Um, but on this video in particular, though, he was he was very humble. Um, I mean he. He was, it was like a passing the torch type video, you know. He, he had his hammer loaded up. He was on his way to the post office. He was going to get it sent off to Michael Todd to, you know, be the new champ until, you know, their, their time comes again when they get to go to battle for it. It was, just, it was just neat hearing him say it. He was acknowledging, you know, Michael Todd is the new champion and, 
and saying, you know, basically there was some discussion about like the technique that Michael Todd used and, you know, Devin wasn't criticizing that or anything. He was rather, rather humble in defeat. And it was kind of the way he, he should have taken it. I thought, you know, some people pout and kick their feet and make excuses. And we really didn't see anything like that. So that was, um, I really, I really liked that video. I thought that was a, he did a good job. That was something he, he needed to say. So it's worth looking at if anybody, uh, I don't know. We, we probably got a bunch of arm wrestling fans out there. I know James Rodriguez oh, tuned sure. in. So, yeah, so absolutely. yeah, if, if he hasn't seen that, that's a, it's a good one to give a look to. So. Well, it's nice to hear about people with humility. Uh, you know, uh, it, it is hard to take sometimes when you have someone that's trying to be almost a character in arm wrestling and, turn things into like an like an entertainment type of it's like an entertainment type of approach so i know that some people you know tune in to be able to see what is he going to say what is he going to do how's he going to act stuff like that so when when part of your persona on tv becomes acting in a certain way i know it can be it can be tough for the person, but it can also be tough for the viewer, and it can be also be a, a breath of fresh air when you see what they're really like when they're not putting that persona on in front of the camera. So, uh, yeah, that's interesting. That would probably be a worth worthwhile thing to check out, Alan. Thanks for sharing yeah. that. <clears throat> so... Oh. Um, we have we have a list of things that we want to talk about today, everybody. First off, Brian Shaw is in the gr- the grip news again, and we may end up talking about uh, Rich Williams in this conversation, which is a name that many people will recognize. So we're not going to do that right now, though. There's there's a big feat that has gone down that we we're going to discuss first. Alan has the information on it, and it's a brand new Mash Monster Four certified gripper guy so what exactly all went down there alan yeah so um this was a this was a feat that was probably hold on i don't know maybe a year or more in the making um there was a fellow named you know his his last name i'm gonna i'm just gonna butcher it but his first name would be valeri and the last name would be like tolsta i guess is how i would pronounce it so i just call him valeri t i guess but this guy was was just blasting up the mash monster ladder you know he was i mean he hits mmo comes in requests mm1 he gets these things and this guy he's taking them right out of the package he's slamming them shut he's holding them in front of the camera for what seems like days you know he keeps doing this breezes right on up requests the mm4 and then boom he kind of drops off the radar we don't hear anything from him for a while and uh all of a sudden the request comes in again um mm4 it looked like it got there pretty quick um and he did his usual handiwork i mean he he opened this box right up hands were chalked and literally first attempt a solid solid close over crush long pause and that was that um yeah just a just a beast you know i think i think some of the problems we've run into with some of these guys trying to make it up the mash monster level is you know a lot of people can't stay at at these upper levels of strength for extended periods of time, you know, so you got these guys like Valeri coming along and they're, and they're killing it and they put in these requests and then it takes like a month and a half for a gripper to get there. You know, it's like, you're not there anymore. Strength wise, you know, it's hard to, you can't, you just can't stay peak, you know? So I think that's why, why we see some of them fall off, you know, I mean, we might even see, you know, have seen Vano actually shut the MM8 had things kind of, you know, gone a little bit, uh, a little bit faster for him, you know, so, so big congrats to him. That was a that was a very convincing and solid close, and easily indicates that he's got he's got plenty more in the tank. So no reason he can't he can't keep on moving. So hopefully he puts in for MM5 as soon as the uh, the four gets back into uh, Cannon's possession. So we also we have a couple other uh, another new actually uh, uh, a new Mass Monster Zero a fellow named uh, Ivan uh, Tikhanov. Um, he absolutely obliterated a number three, and um, a fellow named Victor Sedenko just put in for a, the Mash Monster One uh, cert. So we'll see how that goes. So we might have some other guys starting to starting to make their way up the list here too. Nice. <clears throat> well, thanks for keeping such a good eye on that and having an idea of the 
the chronicle, the full the full chronicling of that MM4 certification, Alan. That's pretty cool. That's good to hear. Congratulations to him. I have a very brief um, thing that if this if this isn't a feat of the of the week nomination, this came in a little while ago. It at the very least it should be. I don't know if you caught a glimpse of this or not, but okay. um, Aaron Corcoran posted a video of his eight year old daughter ripping a phone book in half. I've never seen, I've never seen an eight-year-old do that before. So at the very least, she gets a she gets a thumbs up from me. I thought that was seriously impressive. So yeah, she went cool. to war on that thing and and got it. So <laughs> good to see some some younger kids in there. And uh, yeah, I tell you, that's a that is a great way to get a kid introduced. It's it's reactive. You know, you, you see it. You see the destruction. You know, <laughs> there's there's results for the efforts. It's not like picking up a weight and putting it down. You know, she, <laughs> you got you got confetti all over after the fact. So, yeah, good for her. Hopefully no that's, doubt, uh, that's awesome. just the beginning. Yep. And she's a little sweetheart. Uh, I I met met uh, Aaron's family in 2015 when I went out and visited my sister on the Air Force Base out there in Tucson. And it happened to be the same weekend as when Alan or uh, Aaron was running a competition. So yes, yes. he did not know I was coming out. In fact, I specifically told him that I was not coming out, and uh, but I would sponsor his contest. So I said uh, I put a note like "Do not open until the contest," and I sent out like a big first first class package. And uh, what he didn't know, on top of the sponsorship stuff I sent. I also included my lifting shoes and my weight belt. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh I was cruising around town like uh a gangsta, just kind of <laughs> driving real slow and I was like, where the heck am I supposed to be? Trying to find his house and then I figured out which house is which house it was and then I found a uh, cactus like down the road and I took a picture of the cactus. And I sent it to him on the text message. And he's like, what, I didn't know you had cactuses in Pennsylvania. And uh, I was like, I'm not in Pennsylvania. <laughs> and then <laughs> he goes, are you here? And then I went silent, drove up to his house. And, like, uh, I was going to surprise him. I was going to, like, park out in the street and then walk up to the door and, like, bang on it or something. But when I when I went to park or when I drove by... He was walking out in the yard, like, getting stuff around for the contest, like setting up the gripper table or something like that. So oh, sure. my, my cover was blown, and he saw me. But that was a that was a fun competition. That was a really good time. Yeah. Hey, uh, speaking of that, um, we should probably mention a couple of uh, upcoming comps here. I saw that he just put a, a thread in the, in the grip board for a tentative date of, of March or April of 2019 for his uh, Arizona cactus grip competition. Oh, okay. I got to get that on yep. the, I'll get that on the calendar then because I was yep. updating that, was, that this week. I got that project that was, open. So. It was tentative, you know, I mean, he just he just popped that up there, so I think that was yeah. Yeah, we'll have to take that for what it is and there was a, a mention of Oregon strongest hands um yep. for also um late May of 2019 that I saw got thrown up. So Yeah, and Michael um, Michael emailed that to me as well, so Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. At least they're on the on the books so yeah and we also have the cross canada grip championships that are either going on to right now today as we record this or they've already taken place so um good luck to everybody out there and looking forward to hearing how that goes and i think i believe if i read correctly there was actually one of the legs of the contest were going to take place last night right did, did they not have was it not a like a youth Grip, I, I thought I saw something from Eric, like a he had like a youth grip competition or something like that. No, I saw that. I don't too, know if that was. I saw that there were uh, like 15 competitors, but I almost want to say that they they ran one of the legs last night. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. I'll pull it up. You can talk about the next thing, Alan, if you got something. All right. There. All right. Yeah. Let me. Um, I just wanted to uh, to acknowledge uh, Nate Browse too. Um, he kind of dropped off the radar for a little bit and recently came back and has been knocking out a couple of things. He just had a solid 325s plate pitch. So good for now, you, Nate. You that was that a, 
he I, I put that on uh, that popped up on YouTube. He has a small little unknown YouTube channel. Um, I think it's called. Really? What the hell is that called? I, I don't. I can't bring it up on my my other phone. I'm looking at. I'd have to bring it up you. on the one I'm talking on. Um, he has a small YouTube channel. He doesn't have a lot of subscribers, but I it, um, it popped up on there. Um, I mean, cool. well, solid. That's picked good. it up. Got it to lock out. Big pause. Easy set down. Yep. Yep. Real. Uh, nice. Real easy work of that. So, and uh, boy, you had a killer double fat man handle blob lift. Caught that when yeah, we were messaging just uh, before the show took off. What's that? What was that last part? I I I, I caught you. Um, that popped up. I was literally watching that as you and I were messaging before oh, we got okay. on board for the show. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, I, that was. I did it, that Thursday, and then I didn't have time to to edit it how I wanted to and then I finally did it this morning in between fighting with the the plumbing in my main bathroom so ah. we finally got that we took us about three hours last night to mess around with it we're trying to dude clueless clueless adults here bro we're in there trying to take apart a pipe with a wrench and the pipe the fitting is soldered mm-hmm. oh there you go yeah, yeah. that makes it harder yeah. And then we wonder yep. why that we're, uh, you know, we're defacing, we're deforming the, the fitting where you put. The, I don't even know where you put the damn. Is it a nut? What is it called? Where you put like a wrench on a pipe? Is that a nut? What the heck is that? I don't know. Well, on a on a on a pipe, um, I, I would say you yeah. probably you would probably put the uh, the wrench on the on the fitting itself. Just the fitting. If you only use one called? wrench. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, I know that there are pipe fittings, but I've never seen one. At least I probably mm-hmm. I didn't know one if I saw one. You know, it's one of those deals. Cause like yeah. I know well, you, you know, you have the fitting. pipe itself, but then you have like the, you know, like um, how you have elbows. You know, 90s. You got 45s, unions. Those would all fall in the yeah. fitting category. Yeah. 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 Right. So, yeah. So anyway, yeah. I just pulled up the thread from the Cross Canada contest, and the Waterloo event was supposedly last night. Uh, mm. Ottawa was Saturday, and then Edmonton on Sunday. And, yes, I did see that there were, like, something like 15 kids that did a competition last night at Eric's place. So, I mean. Brave of him to take on that task. (laughs) Yes. To say the least, dude, I was going to say that he was working on, you know, a new crop of gripsters. But, yeah, he's working on going insane, I think. That's like so, a birthday party on roids, man. That's you gotta you gotta rain a lot in. That's a lot of yeah, a lot of flowing sure. testosterone in that room. Yeah, that'd be uh, yeah. <laughs> that'd no be doubt. a tough to deal with. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Any other any other contests to go over, Alan? That are that are on their way or? No, those were the main ones. Those were the main ones that I that I knew about. The only ones that I had seen pop up on the grip board lately. So, gotcha. Yep, I think we're pretty close well, to being. Up to why end. don't we switch gears? We'll talk about the big current event that's going on in the grip world today, and well, we'll get right into it. Brian Shaw once again has set the grip world on fire by doing incline bench press. Now, why would that be something that would be an interest in? The world of grip, it's because he did incline bench press with two Thomas Inch replica dumbbells. And I am pissed off, Alan. You want to know why I'm pissed off? Why is that? You didn't do it first? (laughs) Well, kind of. (laughs) Paul Paul Knight and I talked about doing flat dumbbell bench probably two years ago with inch dumbbells. In fact, we almost went out to the garage and did that because did it because we had two inch dumbbells there he has a he has a selaney iron inch dumbbell at his house that i don't even know whose it is i don't think he knows who's who it's supposed to go to i think oh, i wish that would happen to me yeah why doesn't anybody yeah. lose an inch in my house yeah someone was supposed to either pick that up after like a nationals or a gripmas or something like that and they never did so it sits at paul's house Oh well, he's like, tired uh, of that being there. He can he can send that my way. I can I'll yeah. hang on to that for a while. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 
I had told him a couple of years ago that one of my goals was to get back to doing 150-pound dumbbells for a set of 10 on the flat bench. He goes, he basically said, well, why don't you do flat bench with the inch dumbbells then, with two-inch dumbbells? I'm like, wow, that's a f- f- fantabulous idea. <laughs> and the next, this morning I wake up and I got 55 friggin' Facebook messages and posts on my timeline about Brian Shaw doing double inch dumbbell incline press. So you can imagine it took a little bit of wind out of my sails. Yeah, yeah. That was but, but a seriously my impressive ego being, list. being stomped on. It was obviously one of the biggest videos of the year related to the Thomas Inch dumbbell. Yes. What do you yes. think? I, I I agree. I agree. You know, it I, I don't know how many people have actually seen it, but there was a lot of impressive things I thought I thought took place with that. You know, I mean, he this was a very smooth full deadlift to lock out. He sat down with these things, you know, righted them up on his knees. The the strength it would take just to hold those in those positions and keep them from wanting to take off on you, that alone is just impressive, you know. Then the fact that he if people were watching that, you know, he kicks them up to his shoulder and he got to the point where for a second, one got a little wobbly on him. Now, most mm-hmm. people probably would have tried to dump the weight at that point, yeah. you know, but to, to show you how strong this dude is, he, he, he fought it in and he got it, yeah. you know, and then he took his, his initial press was a bit of a stutter press again, which I, I, I would imagine probably put a little doubt in his mind because I don't think he was entirely convinced this was necessarily going to go his way. And then he turned around he and smoked it for five. With his with his approach to that, then he he's a good he's a good faker, because it, I it, yeah. I saw it as well as as him being totally legit, and uh, actually wondering whether or not he would be able to do it. It's a great yep. video to watch because they it, it wasn't just him doing the feat. Like I wish that on some of my videos I had an extra person there to film so that I could talk and kind of like interact with somebody and stuff like that. It really turned out to be a cool video because it's Brian and his training partner, which I don't know who that guy is. Do you know who it is, Alan? Um, he might have talked about it. I've seen some of their food challenge videos before, actually. <laughs> but oh. um, I, don't, I don't recall his name. Okay. And then he's got a cameraman. So they had a dialogue going like during the course of the incline press warm-ups warm-up sets so it was pretty cool and and uh you know brian was saying he was kind of running down what would be required you know you'd have to you have to be able to first off pick up both inch dumbbells then you'd have to like you said you know put them vertical on your thighs hold them there and then kick them up into position and then be strong enough to do 172 pound incline press which is mm-hmm. which is insane. I mean, I don't know. I think I did 130s for like two or three one time when I was in uh, Ocean City, Maryland. They had they had heavy dumbbells at this one gym once, and that was hard enough. I, I can't even imagine doing 170 some pounds on on the incline. I mean, if, I think it would. I'd be afraid of the bench breaking. Like that would be in my mind. You know, that's yep. that's a that's a huge number. But he was he was that talking is. about all that, and they were able to bounce that back and forth. And I guess the other guy that he was training with was the one that um, challenged him to try it. So it, it was pretty cool, man. You could you could tell like he was getting his head right. He didn't just you know nonchalantly pick them up and then get them into the launch position. He was he he wanted to make sure everything was set up right and, and all that he, stuff. He's a legit. He's a legit. Not just strong man, but lifter. He was very methodical. He chalked his quads. Mm, yeah, I, I never yeah, thought I of doing anything too. like that. And that was yep. just insane, you know. Not to mention too, but he. I think that would be something so smart. That a lot of strongmen would do on something like that. I, cause that's sure. Not part of strong man, you're chalking, you're chalking shit. That you never would chalk. You know? Yep. But, but he um, I agree. he played it safe. He 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 quit at five, and I definitely think he had more. Yeah. And it was just it was a testament. But that's a. That was literally, you know, like I think the only muscle in his body that wouldn't have worked probably would have been like in his earlobes. You know, I mean, think about, you know, picking those things up off the ground, getting them into that position. Everything is working at once. You know, yeah. all the stabilizers. 
I mean, geez, like your medial delt's got to be like more powerful than my, my thigh, you know. That's just like <laughs> just holding that kind of position. That's just insane. Yeah. So that was that was seriously impressive. Um, oh, it was it was awesome. It was a good thing to wake up to this morning, and it it was you know I like I you know it's big when you've got like multiple people sending you a link to the same video. So mm -hmm. you know, and then tags oh. and all that, uh, Facebook, all that was it was that, just uh, coming from all directions. That hit you know Joel Dirk sent us that message like a half a second after this took place. I mean, literally, like, I logged on the video, there was, like, five views at that point. <laughs> mm, really? You know, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, it was instant. So, yeah, real, real impressive, real impressive. So, did, did you get a chance then? Um, we saw uh, Rich Williams put up, a, put up a video on Facebook after that. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many people got a chance to take a, take a peek at that. Um, but it was back, I think it was, I think it was 2011. Um, where it, um, he had, he had pressed the, the inch dumbbells. It looked like it was one of those Sorenex events to me. Yeah. It um, was like, it was summer strong. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's, that's how it looked. So, um, and, and Rich Williams presented it. My take on it was, Hey, you know, I kind of, I did this already or I did it first almost. And I looked at it and I really didn't consider those things the same feet at all. You know, mm -hmm. um, I mean, press an inch dumbbells overhead. That's that's badass. You're seriously strong if you can do that, you know. But um, it was just I thought it was different, you know. It was they were suspended from a rope in the rack. He kind of had to. It, it was it was a standing. From the strongman point of view, it would have been a standing, you know, overhead press. From my point of view, though, it was more like a standing incline press, <laughs> with like a with like a a handoff almost was kind of how I saw it, you know. But um, but it's strong as hell. I mean, he hit it for one. I think he probably could have got it for more. Um, you know, pressing it overhead from a standing position, I mean, you're, you're going to need somebody to – you're going to need to get them in your hand somehow, and you're probably not going to double clean them up. You know, right, that's, right. A, that's a yeah. short list of people that probably got that. So, so anyway, I didn't consider that – I really didn't consider those, those, those the same lift, I guess. And I would say I would have to give the, the nod to Brian Shaw on that one in terms of uh, who did it better, I guess. But uh, we'll see. If people want to comment down below what they considered the greater feat was, that might be interesting to hear about that. So, yeah, that's another one. Like, I, the, like I've said several times, I'd, I'd love to hear from the community. I'd like to hear what, what people think. Yeah. So weigh in, and I'm in not, with your thoughts in the comment section. Yeah, and I'm not trying to bash on Rich. I just, think the, I just think the claim was maybe a little, the delivery was a little off. I just didn't think it was the same thing. But still awesome, but just not the same. Yeah, so. I like what you said about the delivery there. Um, I, I, dude, I, there's more like communications in this uh, comments section of this, but I can't read them because for some reason I'm blocked by Rich Williams, and I don't know why. So, so I don't know. But I mean, it is. They're both amazing feats. Um, both of them require tremendous strength. Both of them require grip strength. Even you know anything that heavy, 172, 173 pounds with a, that thick of a handle. Even when you're pushing it, you're still controlling it. So you've got to squeeze those things hard. And uh, Brian Shaw even oh. mentioned how hard he was squeezing those inch dumbbells when he was doing the five <laughs> incline bench press repetitions. So they're 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 both phenomenal. And yes. You know, I wouldn't you know, take anything away from either one of them because I can't, I can't do either one of them. I can stand no, no. up with the inches, and I can probably plop my ass down on an incline and maybe even, you know, erect them on my quads. But whether I could possibly get them into the launch position from my quads, I honestly have no idea. I really have no idea. That would be – I would be hesitant because of how, mu how little control I'd be able to exert on them. Because that's a lot to you know, buck up. It's got to throw you way off balance. Yeah, dude. You know? My gosh. I mean, well, yeah, considering you're a good sized guy, but you don't weigh 400 pounds and right. being a little heavier has got to help you in an off balance situation like that. You yeah. know, when you're dealing with something that's three fourths of your weight, you know, it's uh, <laughs> dice are loaded, you know, <laughs> you're kind of screwed. So yeah, it's, um, you almost got to get them both up at the same time. If you want a prayer, otherwise, yeah, you're sliding off of something. <laughs> right. I, so, I do wish, I do wish I would have had the balls to try that back in 
05 because while I think my grip is better now, I, I was definitely stronger all through my body back in like 2005. That was before a lot of my back injuries started and I was pressing a lot more weight overhead, push press, jerk, all that stuff. And uh, incline probably I was probably doing like 315. So it would have been it would have been a lot better time to try that feat. I mm-hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to try like dude, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do the incline with the with the with the inch dumbbells because I have a really hard time with incline. Like my incline numbers are nowhere near my flat bench numbers. But I would I would try the flat bench numbers as long as I had people near me that I trusted to spot me. Or if uh You got it yes. Them, I was gonna mention them, that too. Yeah, if we had them set up in a way that they wouldn't break my face, you know, uh, and cause, like, a serious injury. I mean, my looks are no good anyway. If anything, an inch dumbbell bouncing off my head would help me. But, you know, you do have broken bones to worry about and, you know, orbitals and concussions and things like that. So well, there's a little bit yeah. more to it than just, you know, throwing, no. what is it, uh, throwing something to the wind. What is it? What's that expression? Caution. Throwing, Throwing caution, caution to the wind. Caution to the wind. Yep. Yes. No, you got to have competent spotters. You'd need two. One ain't going to be enough. And, yeah. you know, and they need to be capable. I mean, you know, like, like Paul Knight's a big, strong dude. You know, I mean, I would see, like, going after that, like, with him and Luke as your spotters, you, you need guys that are going to be able to manage that weight. And an yeah. inch dumbbell is going to want to do all kinds of wiggly crap at the wrong time. So right. you need people that can appreciate that feat in itself. You know, otherwise, yeah, just just any old person that's just going to end badly. You know, right. maybe even steel toed steel toed boots might not be a bad idea in a time like that. Steel toed you know? face mask wouldn't be a bad idea, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one thing: have you ever have you ever pressed? Now we know the inch is out of the equation now, but have you ever pressed like a fat handled dumbbell? Well, I've I've push pressed or even you know. You might even call it a jerk of some sort. I've gotten the inch dumbbell overhead. Okay, okay. The uh, reason I say... Yeah, but go I, ahead and go ahead with your question. Talking about, you know, doing that stuff, I one time put just um, fat grips on, on dumbbells and did, some, and did some bench pressing. And that, that position and that pressure, that actually hurt my thumb joints. And that shit lasted oh, yeah. for like months. You know... And yeah. it was enough to the point where I said, just, this ain't never going to happen again. You know, right. I, I mean, it, that hurt like hell. That was like, I mean, like grabbing a doorknob sucked afterwards. Yeah. So, it was like, I mean. It was enough to like hinder your list for a long time, right? It did. It did. That's, yeah. that's no joke at all. Um, yeah. I couldn't, I wouldn't even dare touch a block weight after that for a while. It was a long yeah. time. So I would caution anybody. <laughs> if you're thinking about that, yeah, take it, take it easy. You know, cause there's a there's a lot of variables you're probably not even thinking about there. <laughs> well, that's another reason why I don't. I, I, you know, there's lots of reasons why I have not cleaned the inch dumbbell yet. But one of them is the fact that I know how bad it's going to hurt my thumb when I get into that catch position, because no matter how it lands, it, it always lands in a way that's going to hurt your hand. Well, that whether it's going to hurt your thumb back or bruise your thumb pad or you know just land really hard in that some webbing area it's it's gonna hurt yeah yeah you know you, you you whip that thing through the air and that comes landing down you're not talking about 172 pounds anymore that thing realistically once it settles in you could be upwards of 200 for what you're actually dealing with with well, the movement. moving fast you know? and it's flipping yeah because you got to yep. turn the damn it's thing a, over it's a whole nother yeah, it's a whole nother thing yeah it, it's, that's uh, that's going to be, be um, i'm sure it's exponential too like for every yeah for every 10 pounds you go up, it feels like 50 or something like that. Yeah, yep. It's going to be crazy, and it's, and it's going to be literally the first time you – let's say you do that one day. I have no doubt you'll do that one day. That's going to be like you'll never have felt anything like that ever before, <laughs> right. you know, so you don't know what the experience is going to bring. Yeah, yep. That's the uh, – that's kind of the eerie part of some of that, you know. Uh, yeah. But, well, uh, that's why I'm doing yeah. dragon flags because I think that's going to help me clean the inch. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I caught your I'm Turkish getup. I wonder if you're going to start doing uh, backflips. 
Uh, no. No. No, no backflip. No, because you know why? I'll go outside and I'll do it, and I'll hit. I'll open my eyes when I'm looking up at the sky, and it'll make me like wet myself. I, I just, I don't, dude. I can't lay down on the ground and look up at the sky. It's like scary. I got oh, weird. I got, I got problems, dude. <laughs> I, it creates, I never heard it that. It like it creates like an element of panic in me. It's not. Hmm. It's not cool. It's not cool. I haven't tried something oh, I, like a backflip since I was a kid. And um, I think I got back, but there was definitely no flip involved. It was more or less dumping myself on my head, as I remember it. So, wow. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you who used to be able to hit one of those. The only person I know of that would hit one of those, like, whenever he tried, was J.T. Strassner. When he trained with me back in 2013 for about six months. Anytime, oh. anytime he wanted to, he could just do a backflip. Pretty crazy Sweet. stuff. I like watching Gil hit his. That guy yep. gets some, he's got some pistons on him, man. He gets some monster air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like way up there. You don't you don't see that out of a lot of guys, you know. I mean you see no. Juju Mufu pop a bunch too. But uh right. man, yeah. Yeah. No, I had no idea Gil did that sort of thing. So Yeah. See I had a funny I had a funny story about Juju Mufu. Did you catch that you catch that video a while back we posted um where it was him and his boy Tom and they had that that smaller deadlift uh, competitor, some guy, I don't know, he deadlifts something ridiculous, like three or four times his body weight. <laughs> it's like a, I, I don't even know what it was. But they, they, were, they started having like an egg crushing challenge. I missed that. Catch, no, I don't think I saw You missed that one. That one. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Well, here's where I'm heading with this. So you remember a while back, this was, oh, geez, this goes back like a year or so ago, right? Maybe more, probably more. Gil um, posted a video on Instagram and Facebook of him squeezing an egg and crushing it, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, all through my life, I was always under the impression that this was like an impossible, an impossible feat. Like I remember in high school science class. I heard the same thing my whole life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I see Gil doing it, you know, and and we know Gil's a world-class grip competitor. So if, if somebody's capable of doing something impossible like that, you know, seeing him do it could, could kind of add up. So, I got to know how tough this is, right? So this is way back then. I, you know, I opened my refrigerator, I grabbed an egg, and I, I walked over to my sink, and I, and I, I squeezed it, and boom, and this thing just turned into this substance just a little larger than molecules and kind of spackled half my kitchen, right? Yeah. I thought, well, that was stupid, you know? I guess I, I shouldn't have listened to whoever told me that nonsense. So now, fast forward a year or whatever, Juju Mufu's got this, this YouTube video up. And they're and they're squeezing on eggs, and you know Tom Tom's grabbing it, and he's reefing on this egg, and nothing's happening, and and Juju's struggling for a while, and finally, boom, he pops one, and he's kind of hit or miss with what he's crushing, and then the deadlifter dude, he kind of figured out a technique almost for like it's like a almost like a hook grip egg crushing technique, you know, a bit of a cheat, you know, <laughs> and um, Tom made this, he noticed that it seemed like different eggs had 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 variances like how, how grippers vary for example how some eggs were were harder to crush than others mm-hmm. so this instantly gives me this complex i'm thinking okay so i crush an egg i'm i'm thinking i'm a badass maybe i got a, a just a weak egg and maybe i'm just a wimp and this was like a one off right mm-hmm. so the other day i'm i'm home i get home before my wife and kids do and i get this brilliant idea i thought well you know what i'm going to i'm going to go after it again i got different eggs in my refrigerator this time I'm going to try it but because I made a huge mess last time you know and and we get smarter with age I thought I'm going to put this in just a little Ziploc sandwich bag you know squeeze it shut that way you know if I if I squeeze it and it breaks and I'm I'm sure it's not going to break but if it does break it's going to just be in this bag so I open the refrigerator I got the sandwich bag in my hand I drop the egg in it and I carefully get the air out of it you know and I just place it in my hand and I'm squeezing and right at the moment where I thought, damn, I, I, I can't do it. I, you know, I'm just, I don't have it. Boom. The thing explodes because I squeezed all the air out of the bag. It left no place for anything else to go. And like the egg overcrush, boom, caused this thing to just evaporate again, just like what it did last time. <laughs> but it was like one of those, you know, it kind of blew out one side of the bag. So you know how you see cake decorators using those funnel things for like squeezing crap on their cake where they, yeah. You know, they they squeeze on one end and, like, the type 2 diabetes comes out the other. It was kind of like that where it, it sort of 
like spackled all over the side of my refrigerator and I didn't even have the door shut so it got on the gasket and got inside. Why are you doing this, this inside the second time, Alan? Well, Why I know it. It was stupid. It was stupid. Lesson. I know it. I know it. And I was so pissed at myself because I got this shit all over the place but I thought the bag was going to save me. But then here's what the worst part is, right? So now I got this egg which is pretty much everywhere. You know, it even like ricocheted got on my leg. So I got this dog. It, it, dogs can hear like the moment food hits the ground and an egg is technically speaking food they hear that he comes sprinting into the kitchen so i got this 110 pound dog to contend with while i'm trying to mop up all this egg the refrigerator is open it was just a freaking nightmare you know what a mess so anyway the moral of the story is that to save people the heartache is that these eggs are absolutely crushable i can't speak yeah. for like the different like the the gold nail and the red nail of eggs or anything like that you know right but um yeah, save yourself the trouble. Mine were the great value eggs, though, for, for full disclosure here. So if anybody did want to try such a foolish thing, they should absolutely take it outside, and that was the brand that I chose. But, uh, no, next time I'm going to do mine mild weather garden hose ready and will not be indoors. So that was my uh, – I think that's a wise <laughs> idea, Alan. And uh, yes, yes. If, if you think you got all that egg – out of the fridge and off the floor. I think you're crazy. There's salmonella. Oh, yeah, no, it, it sucked, man. It was everywhere. It was everywhere. <laughs> Dude, you can't clean up all the egg. Like, every time you, like, stand in a different spot, you see more egg. Like, when you crack one and it gets all over the place, that slime, it's... I know. I know. I'm um, not even going to bother. I'm just going to wait till the fridge dies and throw it away and just get a new one. Not even going to go to the extremes of cleaning at all. That, dude, that's the best idea. That's that's the best yeah. thing I've heard you say in a long time. That's, that's yep. <laughs> I knew that it was not impossible to crush eggs probably when I was 10, I would say. Maybe 12. Oh, so you, you, had, you had one up on me now. Okay. I didn't no, know I was it was not. It wasn't. It was not I that crushed the egg. I was, I was down to what's called the boat club. It's about a mile from my house. And people would take their trailers down there, and they, they're all in a circle, you know, and then uh, they do stuff at night, and they do stuff on the weekends, horseshoes, you know, different things like that. And people take their boats out, and they fish and stuff like that. It's, it's the boat club. So one night, um, my cousin is down there. His name's Rex. And, uh, you know, I, I watch him chug a beer. He's like 14. He, he chugs a beer, you know. And... Uh, Somebody said something like, hey, you know it's impossible to crush an egg. And I think we might have seen it on Mr. Wizard or something like that. And he's like, really? And they're like, yeah. So he takes an egg out, dude. And this guy, the, the Allens, my, my cousins, the Allens, are, are like all better athletes than me. And when I see these guys now, I'm like, we got to get a gripper in your hand because they're always super strong, all the brothers. The older brother, Mike, is one of the few people that uh, back in the day when I worked at Cargill, he, I, I handed him a number one gripper and he instantly closed it. But Rex, with, without even thinking about it, just simply put his hand on it, squeezed real hard, and the, the egg shattered and blew all over the boat club, all over like all five acres of this boat club. It, was just, it just exploded everywhere like some kind of bomb. So That's exactly what happened. That was, yeah, I knew that that was... Uh, just a, a BS old wives tale, you know, urban legend right there. Um, yeah. If the, you, if you crack it into a frying pan, that's a completely different thing. Yeah. It's, it's well, like, uh, you, dude, it's like, do, do oh, you ahead. ever get, um, like, uh, not, not eggs from the store, but like you got any, you got any friends that like grow chickens and they, they lay eggs and not, not the people, yeah. but the yeah. chickens lay eggs and then they give them to you or you get them real cheap or something like that. Sure. So, um, the guy that gives me eggs is Adam Culver. He's the guy that arm wrestles with Luke and do, has done a couple grip contests. Big snapping turtle dude. Yeah. Yeah, snapping turtle guy. Yeah, the guy that's not afraid of <laughs> salmonella and uh, all these other bacteria. So just met some bees. Yeah, he 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 picks up all the eggs and he gives them all gives us all the eggs that we want. But he says he does. He goes, don't wash the eggs. Because they're they're covered in like shit and they're covered in like you know God knows what from the chicken. He's like, don't wash them, man. He said you can keep them on the on the counter warm for six weeks if you don't wash them. 
If you wash them, they're only going to last a week in the refrigerator. So I don't wash these things, man. And it's it's like it's like cracking eggs that look like uh, mushrooms because mushrooms are grown in turds too, I guess. So yeah. there's like crap all over them. So anyway, it's number one. I gotta I gotta ignore the piles of manure that's on the eggs when I make the eggs. But the other day, bro, I cracked four eggs. They were the most beautiful orange, natural, grass-fed, vegan eggs that were ever produced and healthiest eggs ever. And uh, the fifth one, as I was cracking it, it started spraying all over my shirt like it was, like it had air pressure behind it. Like there oh. was Pneumatic you got pressure. A fermented one. On. Yeah. yeah. And it started spraying all over my shirt. I'm like, what the hell is this? I cracked it into those four perfect. Oh, you ruined them all. And ruined them all. It was the a black, black egg, dude. It was disgusting. It, it, you oh. could tell it was like rotten and had been festering. What did you say? Like fermented? Yeah. No, I know what yeah. you're, I know what you're, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. I was, gro- dude, I was so grossed out. I dumped them, I, th- I actually threw them out in the lawn for the cats. Maybe maybe the cats will eat them, I don't know, or that, or they've cooked That's... the sunlight out in the grass, I'm not sure. But uh, I I put away the, the mixing bowl that I had and got everything out new. I still had eggs that morning. I've told this story to a couple oh. of times. Like, Did you still end up eating eggs? I'm like, hell wow. yeah, what else are you going to eat for breakfast, man? That's, so, that's ballsy stuff, yeah. Yeah. That yeah, uh, most people, a lot of people would have lost their appetite there. Yeah, it's that's the crappy thing about eggs. You know, I used to um, I used to be a breakfast cook at a Perkins, and uh, every once in a while, you know, you'd end up slinging a lot of eggs at a place like that. Well, every once in a while, you'd crack one open, you'd get one that was just nothing but like blood. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's hard to hard to hold it together after that. But um, hmm. I've never had that happen that in my personal you. kitchen. <laughs> didn't, didn't know that about you, bro. I thought you were more of an IHOP, IHOP kind of cook. I didn't know that you would oh. go with the Look at you, the, the snob, yep. short order cook, Alan Hynek. Yeah, it was the a, it was third shift about, back in the day. Talking about got, a, got to got to deal with the drunk crowd. So that's how that yep. always worked. Yep. 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 Sure. Nice. So at least they didn't complain yep. when they got something that maybe wasn't quite right. But. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes the drunk crowd can smell a little bit worse than the rotten eggs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything else that we need to discuss about this uh, another Brian Shaw topic, Alan? No, I don't think so. I'm curious what he'll come up with next. He's running out of things pretty soon here. I'm, he's going to have to clean it. I mean, he's he's, he's got to one up it now. He's he's right. taking it up. So yeah, yeah, see what else he's got in him. For sure, yeah. for sure. Nope. Um, so why don't we close out the show with some feats, big man? What do you think? Sure, sure. What would you say? Did you say the feat of the week was uh, Little Miss Corcoran smack, smashing? Yes, her yes. I I had to give her the nod. I had to give her the nod. Yes, she she needs acknowledgement for that. An, an eight year old, an eight year old male or female ripping a phone book. I think that's impressive as hell. So. Yeah, That's no a, doubt about it. Yeah. Um, man, feet of the week. You were in the running though until I saw that with your double fat man lift. <laughs> oh, you know, you know, and to talk about that for just a moment, um, I'm sure there are p- other people that could do that feat, uh, but you know, and I, I don't, con- I would, I would say the the old school. Yorks, the double old school Yorks was something that was much harder, like just in pure feet of strength wise, way, way harder. No one's done that because nobody has any handle blobs, you know, sure. no one's, no one's encountered handle blobs. <clears throat> I, I don't, I can't name another person that has them. I know they're out there. I've seen them and I've seen pictures. Yep. I know they're out there, but I mean, it's, it is tougher to lift the blob backwards and it is tougher to lift it when the handle's still on it because you're lifting it backwards and it's loaded on the thumb side, but it's not like one of those things that's, you know, super exclusive. I, I know that there's people out there that could that could lift a, a handle blob backwards. I mean, It's still a short still, list, though. What's that? It's still a short list, though, you know, yeah. because I was, 
I was watching that video. I mean, it was obvious that, you know, your hands weren't, weren't cooperating necessarily the way they were supposed to. I mean, you, you know, like I think the first attempt I saw, you know, you, you picked it, you, you had your pick going with the right, you know, lost it with the left, but then you still kind of held it with the right for a second before you set it back down. And you kind of went yeah. back and forth a little bit and finally stuck it. So it's not like you just reached down and, and just plucked them from the earth, you know. Correct. So, yeah, like I said, it's a, I mean, it's not, it's not going to be dozens of people out there. Not every blob lifter is going to pull that one off. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's, uh, maybe, you know, like the Wade Gillinghams, guys like that. Some of the, you know, those dudes oh, probably absolutely. got it. You know. Absolutely. But, um, Provided that Wade has still been training blobs and, you know, wide pinch and things like that, I absolutely he would do it. Um, mm-hmm. What's mm-hmm. interesting, what you don't know about that, Alan, is that I had no power in my house during that workout. I trained for two and a half hours and set like three PRs. Could have very easily said, "Well, I can't train today because the, the lights won't turn on," but I didn't. So sure, yeah. And then uh, the other thing was, I had it was easier for me to lift that handle blob that day than it was for me to lift the other half of it which ended up going, um, on, that I, that I sold to, uh, uh, shoot, uh, shoot. I can't remember his name now. I can't remember his last name. Oh, is that what you did? You cut the head off of one and you kept, you, you made, you made a handle blob? Well, I, well, I kept the handle on there on purpose because of Vassaturo, Anthony Vassaturo is who got the other end of the blob. I, I couldn't. Beautiful. That was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Good for you. Yeah. Huh. So I, I, uh, I left it like that and I, I, I would have sent Anthony whatever one that he wanted, but he said he wanted the number side. So that was perfect because what that does is that allows me to prove that, the the other end, which I still have in my possession, is a fat man blob because the York side is the identifier side for the, the USA stamp. Sure. Whereas you can roll over any 100 and call it a fat man, and you're really not sure if it's a fat man. That was one of the problems that came up when I was at uh, Betters in, in Dubai because his is a 100 side and doesn't have a stamp, and I, didn't, I forgot about that. So... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure where I was going. Oh, um, when I tried to lift the 100 before sending it to Anthony, dude, I struggled, struggled. Probably 10 attempts in the morning, failed every single time, and then in the afternoon it took me close to 10 to get it. It was very, very hard. The chalk would not stick to it the way that I wanted to. I, and uh, the chalk whisperer, Lucas Raymond, was not around that day, so I had to do it with the jed technique which is uh rub a a ton of chalk on there and hope it sticks it's kind of how i do things too what kind of chalk are you using these days anyway oh um the thornex chalk which is my favorite chalk right now would not stick it Ah. would not stick um i had to use my you know my cheapo chalk whatever you know like generic gymnastics chalk. oh sure yeah and i have Dude, I have an interview with John Mauser all ready to go. It's almost it's almost posted on this on uh, thegripauthority.com. He went and like bought all kinds of these chalks and compared them and see how well they stuck and how much he if he was able to pull more weight. And uh, we cover all that in an interview. And I I just haven't had the, the stupid uh, plumbing issue that came up is what got in my way this week because I was going to do it on Friday, but stay tuned because um, he he covers a whole bunch of different kinds of chalks and talks about, like, what his favorite kind is. So that will be up on the sure. Corridor. Interesting. Yeah, Jared, Jared Goldwyn did something like that, too, once upon a time. He did a, he did a chalk comparison and, and arrived at a conclusion. So I, um, you know, personally, I I saw a difference in going from, like, the, the cheap chalk that you get from like you know Dick Sporting Goods or any place like that right. to to going to a higher end chalk, but then once I was there, it didn't seem to make any a whole lot of difference for me personally between them. Mm-hmm. You know, I it just right. that was kind of my thought, but I don't know. It was it was weird. Right now, I'm uh, I've got kind of a hybrid mixture. Um, mm-hmm. I've had like some Friction Labs and then uh, some Viking chalk. The reason I got Viking this last time was just because. 
I was literally on Amazon going to buy Friction Labs, and then they always have that thing where it says, oh, people that bought this also looked at this or whatever. Yeah. And that was cheaper. So I was like, oh, screw this. I'll go with that, you know. <laughs> wow. And, uh, yeah, bought it. So, and I did. I don't notice any difference between that and what I was using. So yeah, works for me. Well, that's yeah. interesting. Um, that's another thing. If anyone wants to share what kind of chalk there is their favorite, uh, let us know in the comments section, and then make sure you like the video. Uh, we were talking about feet, Alan, and we got way, way off track. Uh, <laughs> what happens once in a while? Well, hey, we haven't uh, talked about Jerome Bloom in a while. He just had a, well, a sweet little uh, one-hand meat hook deadlift. Yeah, I saw the one-hand meat hook, which is crazy because it never occurred to me to even try that. I thought that was a great yeah. idea. He's also the guy that, that uh, I don't know if you use the word invented in this case or what, but he was the one that came up with the idea of doing just thumb and pinky on the four-inch bull ring also. And he put up like 40 freaking pounds the other day, dude. Yeah. That's more. Yeah. That's like more than I can do on the unit with all my fingers. That's crazy. Yeah. No, nope, he was he was built for that. Those are those are his lifts. There's no doubt about it. <clears throat> yeah. What else we got here? Yeah. So one hand meat hook. Uh, what else from Jerome? Uh, I thought I saw something else too, but maybe not. I'm struggling to bring up my stuff here. I really was impressed with uh, Brian Hunsacker's 261.6 rolling thunder lift. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, you know, I caught people that. People say that, well, hey, he's 300 pounds, so he should be able to lift that. But, dude, I don't know, man. The, 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 you're, you're talking about rare air, as Richard Soren would say. That is, people People uh, said that? People said he's no, 300 pounds, so he should be able to I didn't to read all 64 comments. Um, so I don't know if people said that, but I do know that people have said that about taller, heavier individuals in the oh. past. And, like, I think it's, I mean, if you're talking about, like, 100 kilos, yeah, I can see what you're talking about. But to say that just because someone's 300 pounds that they're going to lift 260 on the Rolling Thunder, I mean, that takes a that takes a lot of the, you know, that discredits a lot of the hard work that Brian has put in. That's like when people used to say Chris Jones ought to be big and jacked because he's a little guy. I don't know if you remember this oh. Chris Jones from Physiques of Greatness. I mean, that's kind of in the same territory, same, you know, related topic there. But uh, well, he's a, taking he's... away people's hard work just because they're just because they're 300 pounds. I mean, yeah, they might automatically get 200 pounds on the Rolling Thunder, but they still got to work their ass off to get 261. So, well, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't even think. think. Go, Go ahead. ahead. I, I don't, I don't even think weight personally is a, is is a, a whole lot of a variable there. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, this, this is this is impressive nonetheless. But now saying the guy's you know such and such a size, so that should just sure yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't and buy the it only that thing that disappointed me about Brian's lift is. Before we'd seen him working on like Napalm's Nightmare, and he had it, he had the weight situated like it was like a candy cane or or a a barber's pole. It was like blue red, blue red, blue red. Now he's he's got like no patterning to it at all. It's just four black plates and two green. Then does uh, this look like a different place that he's training at? I don't care. I, that doesn't. <laughs> we're, talk, we're talking about style here. I don't. Right. All you got to do is like. Do a little planning ahead, Brian. Come on, let's let's go here. I mean, gee whiz. So. Yeah, but, yeah, that was easy for him. He's got some good arm strength too. He even got yeah. a little bit of little bit of elbow bend going on at the top of that. That was yeah. a solid. That was that was not even a questionable lift. I mean, you can. That's a legit. That's a legit PR. Yeah. You even had your even had the even had the bull ring in the background there if you caught that. Dude, I just clicked the uh, read more or whatever it is. And goal for the year, check. Tweaked risk, check. <laughs> yes. I know it. I know it. The, th the uh, things we do. Well. Yeah. That's funny. And then uh, doing somebody doing something I've never really seen before, uh, D Dolly Zhang 
doing the like kettlebell squeeze, the kettlebell crush with two different kettlebells. You see oh that? yeah, that's that was pretty pretty nifty. Yeah. Yeah, that reminds me of uh, I, I I did a video or an article one time on upper body crushing for steel bending, but I only used one kettlebell, so that's way harder doing doing two kettlebells. But it reminds me, you know what that reminds me of, dude? Do you remember? Uh, like a few years back, uh, a guy named Gary Gary Brown, Gary the Brickman Brown, and he set a world record for brick lifting where, like, he's got them like side by side, like standing vertical, but they're they're side by side against one another, and then he compresses in on the outside two to lift all of them, and he did like thirteen bricks or something crazy like that. Hmm. Well, I miss that one. Yeah. It's on. Huh. Pretty insane. Interesting. Look, like Google yeah. that sometimes. Sometime I'm sure it'll come up, but uh, it's just a just a different kind of strength feat. It's got a little grip to it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, I'm um, I'm, I'm looking. I'm scrolling down this list here. Um, it looks like it looks like Pat Mazels must have stolen Brian's color coordinating skills because he's got a uh, sledgehammer V bar lift and uh, he alternated plates. It's got some black right, green action okay. going on. Yeah, well, yeah. Maybe, so at least somebody Brian, somebody picked up. Yeah, maybe Brian lost the patent on it or something like that. So you know we can't we can't fault him too bad for that. Yeah, at least somebody. Oh, say, did, did you see that one? Um, uh, Brian Brian posted that too, and this is pretty freaking awesome. This is something uh, Josh Henze whipped up for him. That uh, that little that little bent metal figure with the Denny yeah. Stones statue. Yes. That's some awesome stuff. Yeah. Really cool. He, does, he yeah. does some. He does some really nice work. That's a. That's a. That's a prize. You know, he does a really good job with those things. Yeah. You know, way to go. Yeah. Nice yeah. little. Nice little rocks and everything. <laughs> Bad ass. Yep. Oh yeah. <clears throat> there it is. There's the there's the sledgehammer V bar, uh, mint chocolate chip candy cane ice cream. Lift yeah, from, so hopefully that is, there it is. inspires yep. Brian to get his plate color coordinating going back on. Yeah. Yep, yep, very so. good. Good job, Pat. Excellent work. And there's the there's the statue from sculpture, I should say from from John. I'll tell you what he is. He is very he is very artistic. Very very artistic. Lots of skills. He he sent me something that I need to take a picture of and post it up. I've had it for a couple of years here. Um, no, another thing that he sent me was that claw lift thing. Do you remember seeing that? It's like um, I do. Yep. It's like a series of rings, one for each finger and the thumb, that's on a flat piece that can attach to a loading pin. And I've I've never actually used that. It's so pretty. I didn't want to ding it up. So, uh, but I do I do think I. I Thought it was pretty cool. He's he's got some some really cool skills with uh, with steel in the sculptures, no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. Well, cool, man. Well, yeah. uh, we're at the. What the heck is this? All right, dude. I got you. Got to do something for me. It's in the this week in grip results, and the the username is e underscore move underscore lift and he says still can't find an inch dumbbell anywhere so while I'm waiting I've thought of a relatively cheap way of bridging the gap introducing the Franken dumbbell oh yeah I saw that so he takes two looks like 24 kilogram uh, kettlebells and he fashioned a handle between them to make a, a circus challenge bell style item Yep. I um didn't I could have swore uh Delmer Carter. Um he had something I, I'm sure he posted the, the pictures on the grip board, but he was I don't know if he actually executed it or if he just had the concept drawn up. But he had a thing made up where he was gonna use a couple of kettlebells. And machine he's a, he's got like a machinist type background of some sort. I don't know what he actually yeah. does for uh for a living or if that's a hobby or what, but he has some sort of background there. 
and he was going to take it and basically it looked like knock the handles off of it and make it look like an actual uh, inch dumbbell. And I can't remember, God, I want to say he actually did it. Mm. Um, but anyway, at least it, in I, concept, it looks yeah. spot on, you know. So, I mean, he's got the tools. Like, like literally, it looked like, a, like one solid, you know, you know, monolithic piece. You know, you'd never guess it was, it was three separate components to it. Right. You know, so, yeah, pretty cool. But that's a that's a good idea. That's a that's a great way of getting around something, you know. And it's um, yeah, if you got the skills to do that yourself, especially, you could definitely save a few bucks. You don't give inches away. Yeah, so. yeah. It looked it looked like it turned out really nice. It's yeah. eight underscore move underscore lift, and it looks like the gent's name is Tom Barber. And I just told him to hit me up if he's interested in getting an inch dumbbell because I sell them. But I, now I see he's in the UK, so that might not work out so well. But I've yeah. we've shipped them overseas before, so we could do it again. So uh, feel free to hit me up. Um, and that's Alan. I that's probably just about all the time I have right now, dude. I'll probably have to go. So why don't you take the show, take take over the rest of the show, and do what you may, tough guy. All right. Well, that is episode sixty-five of this week in grip. Hope everybody liked it. Let us know what you think about. Uh, uh, Brian Shaw's uh, double inch feet, especially how that compares to what Rich Williams had posted. Uh, make sure you use the hashtag this week in grip. Don't forget to to like the video and comment down below. And uh, we'll be back next week with another one. We'll see you then.